Hello and welcome to Conversations with Karina. I'm Suzanne Mulligan, the Senior Community Engagement Manager for the IMEX Group, and I'm here as usual with Karina Bauer, the IMEX Group CEO. And today we are very lucky to be joined by Ray Bloom, the IMEX Group Chairman. Welcome to your first conversation with Karina. Yes, thank you, Suzanne. <laughs> So we're just three months away from IMEX America, our first live event since September 2019, which is crazy even to say out loud. And I know I speak for the whole of the IMEX team, many of whom are just outside the doors here today. Um, when I say the office is abuzz with excitement to be getting back to live events, um, we can't wait to be on site in Las Vegas in our new home, the Mandalay Bay. So Karina, what about you? What are you most excited about this year? Uh, there's no doubt this year, uh, what I'm excited about is seeing the industry in person. I mean, that that is what the show is all about. Uh, many people, including yourself, have called it a homecoming for the industry even before this happened. And it will be very much that homecoming uh, for the industry this year. So there's absolutely no doubt what I'm most looking forward to is just seeing all our friends, our colleagues, and watching them interact with each other and finally have that opportunity to get down to business and talk about the future positively together. That, that would be the most amazing thing. Absolutely. I would say it's like going back to summer camp, and this year that reunion is going to be better than ever before. Absolutely. So we're obviously celebrating our 10th show in Las Vegas this year, which is incredible. Um, what have been some of the biggest challenges and the innovations that you've seen over the last 10 years? Well, obviously, you know, through to 2019, the show grew every year in terms of the number of exhibitors, in terms of the number of hosted buyers and attendees and just industry professionals gathering. Um, over that time as well, we had so many innovations like our Discovery Zone, the Wellness Lounge the expansion of the education program and also just the general internationalization of the show you know so um over those first nine shows every year and this is what we seek to do at imix america and also imix in frankfurt every year we seek to incrementally innovate the show this year of course we've had a break last year we're moving into a new venue so there'll be all sorts of new innovations as well in terms of the venues that we're using the locations also because of covid we're looking at the flow of the show differently how we make sure people are really safe and comfortable we've been able to look at how we really bring to the front sustainability and csr issues with our new people and planet village for example so as always, we'll incrementally innovate um, the show, but also, as always, the show at its heart is about the exhibitors and the buyers who come, and, and that never changes. Um, but, of course, people's needs around the show um, change and develop over time, and we're always seeking to both respond to that, but also to help people see what's next and see help people sort of plan for the future. And now more than ever, I think that's what people are coming to IMAX to see. Absolutely. Um, Ray, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, again, I'm looking forward to seeing all of our friends again. It's a long time since we've seen them, a long time since the last IMAX. We're in constant contact with our friends from all over the world and the participants in the show. We can't wait to see them. It's interesting, one of our great industry leaders who I speak to regularly has said that the industry is look upon it, looking upon this year as a family reunion. So perhaps that would be the good way of describing it. I love that. I'm going to change that from summer camp to a family reunion. Yes. For the IMAX family, that is more yeah. important than ever. Yes. Um, obviously, you know, the elephant in the room is the reason that we haven't been able to get there for two years is COVID, um, which has just absolutely decimated our industry. And I'm so proud to see us building back. And um, recently on an IMAX Buzz Day, somebody referred to it as building forward better, which I absolutely loved, rather than building back, because the world has changed so much now. Um, but Karina, obviously, our team is based here in the UK, so we are planning an event. The team is out of this room planning an event happening in the U.S. Um, just a couple of months from now. What has it been like for the team to plan an event in the U.S. in the middle of COVID? Yes, I mean, obviously, I think, you know, everybody in our industry has dealt with major uncertainty. Uh, and I think we've all got very good at contingency and scenario planning if we weren't good at it already. And I hope that we were quite good at that already. So, you know, for us, planning an event in another country is no strange thing. That's what we do uh, every day anyway. I think for us, it's all about our partnerships and our relationships, which we've always had very strongly. And I would say are even stronger now if 
if that was even possible than before. And so we're just in absolute constant contact with the Mandalay Bay team, MGM, with the LVCVA, with our strategic partners, MPI, and all our other partners from Destinations International to PCMA. And it's really through them and also through our exhibitors and our intermediaries that we're also in constant contact with that we can get a sense of um, what's happening out in the US, but also through those partners understand the CDC guidelines, the local and national guidelines. And so uh, that allows us to plan very confidently for the show, for a show that we know will be um, planned in COVID safe ways, but also be uh, enjoyable, not a sterile experience. So we feel we, we put a lot of effort over the past few months talking internally about how we make the show very safe and very comfortable for all the participants, but also a fun and enjoyable experience. And we're putting a lot of effort into both of those areas. And I think that's important. And, and I feel very confident that we can put on a fantastic um, show in a few months time, despite some of the restrictions, despite not knowing exactly, will we be wearing masks, won't we be wearing masks? There are all of those uncertainties, but we can plan for all of those uncertainties. So that doesn't have to be problematic. Absolutely. And Ray, I know you're in touch with both our sales team here and also so many people in the US. What are you hearing from them? Well, first of all, the support for IMEX America to go on this year is extremely strong. And that's strong, not just in the US, but globally. Um, the response really has been very powerful. So we're expecting a good show in terms of exhibitor participation. Of course, the situation on travel we're not sure of at this stage. We're hoping that in international travel to the United States will open up soon. With that in mind, we will have, I think, not far off the normal number of countries participating, maybe a little less than its peak in 2019, but not far off with the representatives they've got. In the United States, the market is really very strong and waiting to do business. We want to put on the show so that our participants, so our industry can have business opportunities. And at this stage, from the exhibitor point of view, it's looking strong. And also, I would say, from the buyer point of view. Excellent. We love to hear that news, and I know our audience does as well. Karina, let's talk more about the Hosted Buyer Program. I can see the team is very busy with approvals. Can you give us some more information about what's happening? Absolutely. So, I mean, since um, early in the year when we've been setting up the program with our intermediaries, we could see that demand was strong. You know, the intermediaries in the spring were going out with Save the Dates and they were getting instant um, responses back from the buyer community. And that was when we were all in the middle of lockdown. We opened registration at the beginning of June and and really it's flown since then is the only way to describe it. It's been the fastest pace of registration that we've ever seen for um, IMEX America or indeed IMEX in Frankfurt. So um, it's going great. We have almost 3,000 buyers already registered between mostly hosted buyers, but also a very good number of high quality buyer attendees as well. Um, and so we can see that the demand is there um, largely from North America. We do have international buyers as well that we very much hope we'll be able to get in but even uh, from North America it's just been hugely strong demand and really from all of the sectors that you would imagine from our event agencies uh, the associations a really strong number of corporate planners as well um, in the region of 20 25 percent which is what we would expect and as well as independent planners so all the sectors um, are there and um, yeah it's going really well as you say the team are very busy with approvals but the other nice thing is they're also busy with processing the refunds and so it's when they start processing the refunds that we know the buyers are booking the flights and so it's great to see that whole cycle um, starting to really come through now. Absolutely. Do you have anything you'd like to add, Ray? Well, the demand from the Hosted Buyer Programme has really exceeded even what we expected when we first launched. After all, we couldn't, have been, we couldn't have known that at this stage it would be above the 2019 levels, which were a record. So it started off very brightly. I think we had a good idea early on when the Save the Dates first went out and we are achieving the sort of numbers that Karina just said. Of course, we're thrilled because that's the foundation of everything we do, to bring in the buyers to meet the suppliers who attend from all over the world. 
Absolutely, and I just think I'm really looking forward to just seeing those meetings happening. You know, there is nothing like that buzz on the show floor when you see people shaking hands and really making those deep connections that are going to be future business. Yes, the, the numbers from the United States, Karina has just mentioned, are very strong. Internationally, they're looking strong. And of course, as international travel opens up, we think that there'll be a tremendous expansion of numbers. We can see that as well. So we're really on course on the buyer side. Absolutely, that's fantastic. And, and Karina, if somebody is sitting watching this today and they haven't yet registered to attend, what would you tell them? I would say that it's a no-brainer to attend the show. Um, you know, if you are serious about being in this industry, this is the time to come to the show to see your clients, to see your colleagues, to see your peers, to do business for the future, and to also get a real sense and understanding of what's coming next and how you can best plan your career and your business for mm. the future. And so it's those dual things, I think, that are so, so important. Important. And we just want to see everybody in the industry come together and really enjoy being together. And I think what's interesting is, you know, this demand from buyers shows that the market is there and is so strong. People are, are not coming speculatively. They never have. We approve them very carefully. So it shows that there's business on the books and people and corporations are really, really intent on getting back to meeting um, in person. And I think you can see that in the US in terms of how quickly um, things are opening up. We can certainly feel that here in the UK and in Europe as well. And so I just think it's so critical for people to be at our event, but also to be at the many other industry events that are taking place over the coming 12 months. Just make sure you get out and, and you come and support these industry events and, and support your peers and colleagues. Absolutely. We have to be together, don't we, in this? And we have to come together and support the industry. Yes. Yes, we're expecting a very strong presence, as Karina has just alluded to, and part of that will be the industry associations who will be there in great strength. So I would encourage everybody to participate in the show. There's no doubt that by coming you're going to see your peers, senior ones, people on the level that you're operating at. It's going to be very worthwhile. And Ray, what are you most looking forward to on site this year? Well, the first thing I'm looking forward to, as I've mentioned earlier, is to see our friends again, to see all the people in the industry who we've worked with for so many years, to see the organisations, to see how they've come through this difficult period, because we're all working to come through it all together at the same time. Looking forward to seeing the industry collaborating again, to working and supporting each other, as it has been doing over the COVID period, but now they'll be together in the show. So we're looking forward to everyone working together. We're looking forward to the new initiatives that are being formed, new alliances that are being formed, and really to meeting everyone again. Fantastic. Well, thank you both for joining me today in our conversation with Karina with our special guest, Ray Blue. <laughs> and thank you all for joining us. We hope you've learned a little bit more about IMAX America and what you have to look forward to this year live at the Mandalay Bay. We'll see you there. <laughs>